the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Mm-hmm. Only through Jesus Christ. You got to put your faith in the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. Got to believe. Who not was only him? his death, not only his resurrection, but you got to put your faith in his poured out life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, was, okay, so he said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Right. So he, killing killing animals, going through the ritual, going through the feast, going through the festival, not doing things on the Sabbath day, trying to keep the law, and that all the while they're doing it, they don't realize they are not doing what God intended. Mm. Sound familiar to you? It does sound familiar. It sounds you can be religious. That's 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 the that's the part. It's happening in a lot. It's happening in a lot of building every Sunday morning right now. Man, <laughs> checking the box. So they go, they're going through a whole lot of stuff. But if they have not submitted themselves until the righteousness of God, in the end, they're going to be disappointed. Hmm. Because if you if you are going about your own to establish your own righteousness. You can never bear the fruit in verse eight of Mark chapter four. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, impossible for people, it's impossible for these people in verse three to produce the fruit that Mark is talking about in verse number in, in Mark four eight. It's impossible. Amen. And so he he goes on to say, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. We can, we can say a whole lot about that. Mm -hmm. But what he means is, is that Christ is, to, is the mean. See, if you could have kept the law, mm -hmm. you would have been right. Be yeah. But because it was impossible for any offspring of Adam to keep the law. It was necessary for God to move away from law. Mm. Yeah, I agree. You follow me? Yeah. Yep. So, so the law was never intended to produce righteousness. Right. The law was intended to reveal to you that you can't live right. Right. Can't live. Sure. And, and would that apply to Adam too? Yes, sir. Yeah, a living soul can't do it. Because you're going to see now, when it comes down to Jesus, it says that he was tempted and all wise like as we are, yet mm -hmm. without sin. That's right. Hebrew. Because he had life within him. Listen now. That, that, listen, as far as I'm concerned at this moment, this is a worship moment. Because right now, that text said that Jesus has set himself apart from everything else that's called man. Yeah. <laughs> he alone, he the only one that I ever knew that lived his whole life, was tempted, and there was no sin found in him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, I don't believe he never left it after a woman. Mm. I, 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 how many of y'all, how many of y'all can say that? <laughs> I, I can't say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I say I'm lying, so I'll... <laughs> okay, so, so, verse, verse, it says, but first of all, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. Moses described the righteousness which is of the law that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But you got to do it. You got to, you got to keep all Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. If you keep nine and break one, you get the same judgment you would get if you broke all ten of them. Mm -hmm. Right. You see, yeah. that, see, then we got a problem with God. But I only broke one commandment, and he broke all nine of them. But I both of y'all end up in hell. <laughs> yeah. <That laughs> hey, hey, it's almost like the uh, the guys went into the garden. Those are 
Girl, I did all the work for the whole day, and uh, yes, sir. And the other one just got that one one little hour, and he was like, "Why did he get the same thing?" <laughs> so, <laughs> if you got ten glasses of sign and I sit them on the table, one man drank all ten of them. The other man drank only one of them. Both of them did. Woo! <laughs> Woo! It, it don't take but it don't take but one one violation of God's law. Adam only had one law. One law. Obeyed him. Yeah. He didn't have one. Yeah, he just had as one. As soon as he violated it, that was it. God said, get this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get this step in. You can't stay up in here. He said, he said, you naked boy. <laughs> he, he just messed up one time. One time. Damn. Yeah. What? I only gave you one. And here we are. Here we are in this Zoom meeting. I can't count the number of times I messed up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. So verse it says, verse six says, But the righteous and wisdom of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend unto heaven? That is to bring Christ down again, down from above. Now you'll notice now that and everything is thought now is going to start focusing on Christ. Right? He said, don't, don't ask who gonna go up there and get it. He said, that's to bring Christ down again. Mm. The mere fact that Christ came down to the earth, he descended all the way down to the earth. He became a man. He was put to death. And the scripture said that he went and preached to the soul. Good God. <laughs> he did. And that's why I think when you say soul, soul is the self. That's where the self-righteousness is in the soul, not in the flesh anyway. Listen, not only did he preach the living people, on the planet, he would have preached to the souls of men that had died and gone on who had not yet had the chance to hear this great gospel. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Amen. It's true. He goes on to say, verse 7, oh, who shall descend, who shall descend unto the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Mm. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and even in the heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Yes, sir. He said, listen, all you need is the words that are coming out of our mouth. Mm. Amen. Now, I want to be careful with that now. Yeah. We men are saying, Paul is saying, that I, pre I preach the gospel to you under the anointing of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Mm. So when you hear me preaching, you are actually hearing the word of God. The voice of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For what saith the scripture, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For right. there is no difference between the Jews and the Greeks, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now we're going to get serious. Mm -hmm. and, how shall mm -hmm. they, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Preachers are supposed to be sent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not just wake up one morning and decide to go. Amen. There is a call from God upon them. Mm -hmm. There is an unction upon of God in them, provoking them and moving them and pressing them and trying to persuade, persuade them that there is a call upon your life to be used of God to proclaim this message of the King. Mm. How shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? Verse 14. And how shall they believe on him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And yes, how shall they preach it except they be sent? As yes, it is sir. written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But listen, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, or Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report? Uh huh. So then. Faith cometh by hearing. 
-hmm. Where does it come from? Woo! Jesus. Word. The voice of God. Mm -hmm. The word of God. The word of God. The voice. Look, he just said, little Bishop put it one time. He said, he said faith comes by reading. He said faith comes by hearing. It, and faith don't come by you doing something. <laughs> faith comes by God doing something in you. Woo. He, if you'll think about the day you got saved, I guarantee you, you were confronted by God. Mm. Yeah. Amen. You were confronted by God about your evil, low down, wicked, hateful doggies. <laughs> he brought all of your wretchedness before your very eyes. For you I, I said, ouch, Bishop. Quit talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> he shows you how you look in his sight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And once you, listen, in that moment, if you are humbled by it, and broken by it and brought to a place of sorrow and contrition and you're grieved by it. listen you're grieved by what you are you ain't grieved by what somebody else is you're grieved by what you are yeah. right that's what the spirit of god is trying to do the spirit of god is trying to take that word of god and penetrate your heart hmm. so that conception happens then when conception comes about repentance Confession, <laughs> contrition, sorrow, <laughs> weeping, no running. <laughs> All that begins to happen when conviction comes. <laughs> pride is thrown Amen. out the door. Look, pride is thrown out the door. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't put somebody else down because you're like, oh no. <laughs> I've been beat like a wet child. <laughs> now listen up. 17 still is that faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Hearing. See, when a man stands in the pulpit, he is obligated, solemnly obligated, to stand there with the absolute assurance and confidence that the Spirit of God is going to speak through me. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, listen, I've been in the pulpit one time in my life. I knew. I knew the Spirit of God wasn't speaking. Mm. Mm. He told me before I am on my mouth. Okay. Since you're going to be hard-headed, you go ahead and preach. Woo! Woo! What I did was, I went back and got one of the old sermons that I had preached before. Okay, okay, okay. And I decided that that's the more that I'm going to use that sermon and preach it. Mm. Right the I realized is that you ain't free to make that choice. Because mm. you don't know who's sitting in that congregation. Mm. You don't know who's sitting out there thinking about committing suicide. Yeah. You've got a loved one back at home who's waiting on the, at, the, at the point of death. They need to hear from God. They don't need to hear from you. Woo! You, you take too much on yourself if you're going to stand in the pulpit and you're going to decide what to preach. My God. But mm. that's Sunday morning. I stood up there and he said, okay, you got it. <laughs> when, I, when I opened the book and read the scripture, I knew in my heart, I knew in my heart what I needed to do was to stop right there and say, okay, I hate to say this, but I ain't no, I ain't no position to preach this morning. Mm -hmm. Woo! But what, I, what I thought I could do, the spirit of God had let me know right here in this pulpit, I can't do that. Woo! But you know how we are? Yeah, we won't get embarrassed. We're too proudful. We're too big. We're too concerned about what folks gonna think about us. So I'm gonna stand there and try to read it anyhow. And the more I read, the more grieved I got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I I guess you should have just just moved your manuscript out of the way and let the just open the Bible and let God just take it where he wanted to take it. No, take I, I mean, I it no out of the way. What I should have did was confess. That's what I should have did. I yeah. should have told those people that it's possible for a preacher to get in the pulpit and God ain't going to say nothing through him. I should have told them that. Because I was out of position. <laughs> if you're out of position, you can't make the spirit of God speak. Mm. Woo! Woo! Now you can get up there and entertain people and who and slobber and then get people emotionally stirred, but that ain't going to do nothing for them. Woo! 
what are you talking about? I don't know. I